As you can see over here, well, we have already finished preparing, so let's begin the execution. Question here says, remove the stopper from the small hard glass test tube, which is this one here. Label sort cube. Heat this test tube gently at first and then strongly for about a minute. And during this stage, you may observe water droplets being formed at the sides of the test tube. So, I'm supposed to heat it gently first and then strongly. So let me light up the Bunsen burner. Right in front here. I'm supposed to heat this gently and then strongly for about a few minutes. And I, I'm supposed to also test any gases evolved during this process. So let me prepare my litmus paper, red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. Dry litmus paper have no use. So I need to damp it with distilled water. And at the same time using a glowing split. So let me prepare everything before I start heating. This is a lighter spin. This is a glowing spin. I will let it light up first and let's start heating. I notice over here solid cube melted into a solution, into a clear solution. And there's water droplets formed at the side of the test tube. Let me test. Does the gas evolve really like the glowing splint? Gas evolve have no reaction with the glowing splint. And as I'm further on heating, you notice that it turns from the clear solution and become a whitish powder liquid. And I have to heat for another minute or so. Now, whenever the question says that you have to heat for another minute or so, Truly, we have to heat it very strongly. White fumes is evolved. Gas evolved turned the blue litmus paper red. We can see over here that the red litmus paper turns slightly blue. Let me test the litmus, uh, the lightest, the glowing splint again. And I noticed that the solid has changed to a pale yellow color. Gas evolved at the mouth of the test tube actually we like the glowing splint this time around. Alright, so I can write down the observation. Observation 1. Upon heating solid Q. Q melted to a clear solution upon further heating white fumes are formed gas evolved turn damp blue litmus paper red and you can see over here at this portion they have already dissected this part of your paper into two parts so when you talk about the observation with the litmus paper, you should be writing at the second portion of the paper here. And then, as well, you also have a glowing splint, so it relights the glowing splint. We have finished this part. This is a four marks question, two observations and two observations of the solid that you see.
and also two observation to the litmus paper and the glowing splint. Now, not forgetting, uh, upon further heating, solid Q turn to a pale yellow solid. Well, let's move on to the second part. Remove the stopper from the large stopper test tube label sort cube, which is this one. Add about 10 cm cube of deionized water, which is actually distilled water. I have done the marking. Ten cm cube. I just need to fill everything all the way up with the still water. And this will be my sample solution cube. Making sure everything dissolves, shake the mixture. Let me put this here. It goes on to say, place about 2 cm cube of Q into a clean test tube. This is Q. So I'm supposed to put 2 cm cube of Q into this test tube. Okay, and then over here says add a few drops of sodium hydroxide, shaking the test tube between each drop. As I add sodium hydroxide, white PPT is formed upon shaking. White PPT do not dissolve. So let me write down. Upon adding NaOH aqueous, white PPT is observed. add 2 cm cube of sodium hydroxide to it the white PVT still do not dissolve so um, the next part says add another two pieces of aluminum foil and right now I'm going to heat it and warm the mixture now this is uh, an end ion test actually to test for the presence of ammonia gas because if this is nitrate is present, ammonia gas will be evolved. So I will require red litmus paper. Let me tamp it. Because ammonia gas will turn then red litmus paper blue. So let me heat this first. Hold the test tube, heat it. Hold it at 45 degrees. Heat it gently. It require you to gently warm the mixture. Now you notice that I do not put this the litmus paper into the test tube while i am heating i remove it at the side and i place the litmus paper inside the test tube guess the white film is evolved i can see from my side here white film is evolved and the gas upon touching the damp red litmus paper it actually turns blue all right so let me write down the observation Gas evolve, turn, then, red litmus paper, blue. Well, I can safely come to this portion because I'm supposed to suggest an identity for the cation and anion of salt Q. So immediately, I can safely say that the anion of Q is nitrate. Evidence in part B, when NaOH added, followed by aluminum foil, gas evolved, turn, then red litmus paper blue, ammonia gas is evolved. Therefore, nitrate is present. Now remember, always write down the 
the end ion first and the evidence because your job is to collect as many marks as possible. Now, next part, we're supposed to test for the cation. So this is my C. I'm supposed to add about one cm cube of Q and another one cm cube of aqueous ammonia. YPPT, slight YPPT is C. Well, I can see over here that upon adding 1 cm cube of Q and 1 cm cube of aqueous ammonia, slight white PPT was C, it's over here. Slight white PPT was C. So let me write down slight white PPT was C. And let's go back to the QA sheet here. QA sheet here says that if there's no PPT or slight PPT, actually calcium is present. So I can say that cation Ca plus 2 is present, evidence, part C, upon adding aqueous ammonia. Slight white PPT was observed. Next part, solution R has been prepared for you, which is here. And in part D, you're going to use this carbon dioxide generator, which is this portion, to bubble CO2 through solution R. Place about 2 cm cube of R into a clean test tube. Well, R, this is the clean test tube. Use the carbon generator to bubble CO2 through solution R. This is the marble chip that was given. I'm supposed to add some hydrochloric acid to it. Bubbles is observed. And let me bubble through solution R. Very quickly, white PVT is observed. So let me write down. Let me put all this here first. So I can safely say that white PVT is observed in solution R. And let's go on. They say that I'm supposed to heat this. Remove the test tube containing solution S from the delivery tube, which is this product. Gently heat solution S until it starts to boil. So let me on the Bunsen burner. Water droplets form at the side of the test tube. Let me see the observation. Over here, we can see that the white PBT is still present in the solution. So let me write down the observation. White PBT present in solution S. Well, the last portion here, we have finished part E of the conclusion of sort Q. Part F here, consider the result of the experiments that we have performed, give to further conclusion about the chemistry. Ions or gases evolve in these reactions. Well, in conclusion, one evidence. I can say that carbon dioxide evolve in part D is in part D evidence. I can say that CO2 evolved, caused R to become white. Therefore, I can conclude over here that my R is actually lime water. That's one conclusion. And conclusion two over here, we can also say that in part A, an acidic gas is evolved. Evidence, because it turned them blue litmus paper red. And what acidic gas is this? Now, uh, if we look back, Q is actually calcium nitrate. 
So upon heating Q, the acidic gas most likely is nitrogen dioxide. So I can conclude nitrogen dioxide evolved because it turned damp red litmus paper. Turned damp, uh, damp blue litmus paper red in part A. Well, I finished the execution.